So now we have a few things to do in Factory Lobby. First we're going to tag DK. Come over here, pull the lever, and get his music pad banana. If you're really unlucky, the zinger can knock you out of the gorilla grab animation. He knocked me out of the cutscene there. If you're fast enough, you can kick, jump, attack onto the platform there. I wasn't because I got knocked away. <clears throat> but just play bongos there and get the banana. You can do the things in Factory Lobby in any order. Except make sure that Kisplat is not wandering around when you do DK's golden banana. If you break the box and then tag DK and do that banana, you'll kill the Kisplat and have to wait for him to respawn. So this Kisplat we can actually whittle down with Chunky. If you hit him with the Primate Punch to open the box, you want to shoot him three times. If you don't, I missed, so I'm going to shoot him four times. Jump up, tag Tiny. The blueprint. I think the fourth one didn't register because I jumped in the tag route too early. Get her blueprint, tag Diddy, and then leave the lobby. Fun fact, you play as all five Kongs at some point in Factory Lobby. So you're going to jump down a little to the left of Warp 4 here. You can aerial attack if you're not confident with your jump. Simeon Spring here, and this is the next and last Petty Barrel Bandit. Welcome to bonus stage! So this one is much faster than the one in Frantic Vector. So because of that, it's a lot less punishing if you can make a mistake as well. I don't know off the top of my head what the worst possible time is without making a mistake. I know that the best is 24. I'm assuming the worst is in the ballpark of 17. Well done. So I got another 20, which is really good. I'm gonna tag DK, because we need him right out of here. And just leave. Come down. Shoot DK switch. Again, you can scope if you're not confident in your no scope skills. And get the banana. Come to Galleon Lobby, tag Chunky. We need to both enter the level as him and his Kisplat is right here. My ammo's a little low, that's not a problem. Just get his Kisplat and come into Galleon. I don't know why I was mentioning B there. Come down here, pick up the ammo, shoot the pineapple switches. On N64, I believe you have enough time after shooting the switch to primate punch. Um, that'll carry Chunky's momentum a little bit forward, as you can see there. Come into the water. Swim over to this green plank here. When the wave is at its highest, you're going to jump and aerial attack. Grab the ledge and pull yourself up. Shoot Linky's Kisplat there, or chuck the cannonball at him if you're not confident on your ammo count. This is one of, I'm going to pause here, this is one of the hardest golden bananas for a beginner to learn, is the cannon game. Uh, the reason being that you can't use Z to slow down the reticle, because Z is your fire button. And a lot of beginners also have trouble with um, aiming correctly because of the delay between shooting and when it actually lands. It can be hard to time it. So I'm going to show you guys kind of the easy spots to shoot to be able to hit the targets. They're not the fastest. They're about five seconds slower than the best possible cannon game. But they're easy enough that you can shoot. So this first target you should have no problem with. You can just shoot it wherever. Second target, I like to shoot around here while it's on its way up. I missed it a little bit, so I'm going to go to the left. 
just again. It's really hard to aim on Virtual Console because of the dead zone on the controller. So come over here. I like to aim where you're actually on the target and then fire. That was actually a little low, so come to his eyes. You can see why that uh, minigame is difficult for beginners. It's difficult for me too. Over here, get the banana. If you're super brave and can splat shockwaves there, you can get damaged by his shockwave and skip the banana dance there. I wouldn't recommend it. That is called an orange dive. You can do them in some places if you want. They're mostly for style. They probably save a little time. If you throw an orange while you're falling over water, you'll sink down really fast. So swim through vertical walls to the left of the ramp and go just parallel to the wall that the ramp is on and you'll be into the lighthouse area. Swim down, tag Lanky, come up and get on guard. So you can hold A or mash A, you can do whatever. I don't think it makes any difference how fast on guard moves. Here you're gonna break the chest open. You're gonna hold A, break the chest, and then quickly hit Z and C left to detransform. If you're at a good angle, Lanky will move forward as he's detransforming and the banana will spawn on top of him. So let's see. So I got it there. That saves a little bit of time because there's no banana dance regardless. It just saves the little bit of time you'd have to spend swimming to get the banana. So you're going to come up here, tag Diddy, swim straight up along this wall, and kill his Kasplat. You can do another orange dive here. Hit the switch to raise the water. We'll need this for a couple things later. Um, important tech that I'm doing, when you, if you're at a dead stop in the water, if you hold B for a little bit and then press A, your Kong will start instantly moving at top speed. So I should actually not do this swim blind. So I'm going to come back here. So here you're going to swim through vertical walls, C up to get your camera out of bounds. It can be kind of annoying. You just want to follow the path. Galleon has a very, very tight void, so it's really easy to void out if you're not careful following the path. As you learn the level, you can start doing that swim blind and you kind of get the feel for where you are. But for beginners especially, I just follow the path and see up if you're not comfortable. So we'll come over here and tag Chunky. This Kisplat can be kind of annoying if he stands a shockwave like that knock you off. I just fell off. Like that. Sometimes he'll get really happy and just do it non-stop and you have no opportunity to jump up. Chad is telling me it is six strokes if you want to do the swim blind before turning slightly to the left. Thank you, Kiwi Killer. We're gonna come over is Tiny. This is the five door ship. It has numbered doors. Tiny is door number five. So come over here. You can swim through vertical walls and the bars here. So this banana can be kind of annoying to get. You have to come through here. It's really good to line yourself up because once you enter the room, the camera enter the camera goes to the ceiling and looks down on you. So the depth perception can be very difficult, and the starfish can be obnoxious. They'll just run around and knock you out of the way. It's horrible. So I'm going to come in here, get the banana, pull hard left, starfish is in the way. It's a very long recoil if you get hit by the starfish. You're going to come up to the top of the ship here, swim over the bar, it has a much higher hitbox than it looks like. 
Tag Lanky. Lanky is door number four, so just go in. I like to take this pathing because it helps me avoid the pufferfish when it explodes. So now we're going to swim over to the left here and do Lanky's two-door ship. Um, if you're on N64, you cannot do this clip on Virtual Console. You're going to you're going to swim through vertical walls on the side here, and Lanky will he'll do this, and then eventually he'll go through. Because it's a lag clip, Virtual Console can't do that. So we have to come down here, swim through vertical walls on this wall, and come in from underneath. Sometimes the camera can be a little annoying. Sometimes it'll stay under the ship, sometimes it won't. So just get underneath and find your way to the door. I actually got really high up. So come in here. This out of bounds isn't too difficult. If you're really unconfident, you can grab on guard, break that chest over there, and take the tunnel around. But the swim is really easy. You just swim the vertical walls out. Stay up to pull the camera with you, and then come grab the banana. Make sure to hit the bottom half, as the top half does not actually have a hitbox, so you can't grab it from the top. Again, swim the vertical walls, get the camera behind you. We're going to swim parallel to the room, and exit through Tiny's entrance. It's actually faster to leave that way than it is through Lanky's. So we're going to come out. Swim over to the treasure room here. This is the second of the big four edge kicks, and in my opinion, the easiest. What I like to do for this kick is I wait for the water to be low, jump out, and kick. Come up. This Kasplat can be completely horrible. I like to land either above or below him, that way if he shockwaves, he can't get me. If you want, if you're on top, you can shoot him. See, he just, he'll just do that. It's horrible. He just doesn't stop, so I'm gonna shoot him. Grab this ammo because I did that. You can orange dive there, I went a little too early. Tag Lanky. And then the wall that the chest is on, you can just swim through vertical walls and keep going and you void out. Yeah, Kiwi Killer brings up a good point. If you grab the ledge there as DK and you're hanging on, the shockwave can't knock you off. So that's another good strategy if he's spamming shockwaves. So come over here, get Linky's Kisplat. Throw an orange here to kill the barrel enemies. Now these chests are not random, the banana is always in the right chest. And that's the only one you need to break. The left one has a fairy, which is good for 101, and the back one has headphones, which we do not need. Not for this route anyway. So I'm come to the cannon, hold Z to ignore the landing animation, swing across the vines. Sometimes Chunky will just randomly miss the vine. There is absolutely nothing you can do about that. That's just the game being poorly programmed. So we need Tiny at the end of the Puff Toss fight. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my information on Puff Toss here. Puff Toss is not a random boss. His stars are in the same place every single time. You're in the same place every single time. 
there is a set pattern to it. So this can be kind of confusing to read at first. Basically, every time there's a dash, it means you turn around 180 degrees. So you start moving, you start each phase going counterclockwise, except for the very first one, and yeah, just the very first one. Oh wait, that is counterclockwise, my bad. You're starting every phase counterclockwise. So the first star is going to be in front of you and a little to the right. You're going to hit it, turn completely around, go clockwise for three stars, then go counterclockwise for one star. You'll end the phase facing counterclockwise. You'll end the phase facing clockwise. Then at the start of the next phase, turn around and go clockwise. So for phase two, you'll just go clockwise for all five stars. It's a little confusing at first, but as you practice the boss, you start to get the hang of it. So we're going to ledge clip into the stairs, as we always do. So the first star is always in the same spot, so I'm going to start moving counterclockwise. I just did a little bit. Sometimes it'll hit you during this cutscene and just send you flying off. It's really annoying. So now I'm going to move clockwise for three stars. One. Two. Three. Counterclockwise. And I want to end the phase clockwise, so I turn around. I got hit, unfortunately. I turn around before going through the star, since I want to end the phase clockwise. So now I start every phase counterclockwise. And I'm going to just hit all five stars. End the phase moving clockwise. Move a little, turn around counterclockwise. Hit the star, get hit by a fireball. So that's what the notes mean. You can hold R to turn faster in the boat. That's something a couple people don't know. I didn't know that until I started speedrunning. So, unfortunately, you shot a fireball in the way. If you line yourself up with Puff Toss and kind of hit the last star while you're parallel to it, if you land in the center of him, you'll grab the key instantly after as it spawns. Unfortunately, I got hit by a fireball. There really wasn't anything I could do about that, so I missed the early key grab. So I just drive into it. So that's it for Puff Toss. Puff Toss and Jack are the two hardest bosses in the game. So there really are no more difficult fights after this. The reason we need Tiny is to come get her Kasplat over here. There's really not a better place to tag her. We need her right after the level anyway, so it's just the easiest thing to do. And just walk out of the level normally. 